If you followed this channel in the past, you'll know that I love covering obscure high-end PC components. So you might assume that my daily system is something insane as well, but the opposite is true. It's this Sandy Bridge i7-2600K based system. And most of these components I bought in 2011, over 10 years now, and I never would have expected uh, me to have used this system for 10 years, but here we are. But what did I buy and why did I keep using it for that long? Well, let's find out. Let's start with the components I bought on November 30th, 2011, and what has also been changed. Starting with the CPU, we have of course the i7-2600K, Sandy Bridge quad-core with hyper-threading. Next up for memory, we've got two kits of 8GB Corsair Vengeance DDR3-1600 CL9, this was the go-to memory kit back then. For the motherboard, we've got an ASUS P8Z68V. This was a uh, nice premium motherboard from ASUS back then with the Z68 chipset for overclocking. For cooling, the Cooler Master 412S. Can go up there. For power, a Cooler Master Silent Pro Gold 800 watt with a very pretty box. I gotta say, this was a nice box. For the SSD, the now defunct OCZ brand, Vertex 3 120 gigabyte. One of the first sort of affordable 120 gigabyte SSDs back in uh, 2011. And for the GPU, initially one of these EVGA GTX 570s with 2.5 gigabyte of video memory. Let's put that over there as a little later got a second one for these in SLI. And I can tell you that Battlefield 3 on 2570s, that was something to brag about to your friends. And later I updated that to a 3GB GTX 1060 for Battlefield 5 and just recently to a GTX 1080 in preparation for Battlefield 2042. And finally the case. I first bought a Cooler Master 692 Advanced, which I also mentioned in the video about the IC dock. I then added a battalion of Corsair fans to it, which made it even louder than it already was. So around 2014 I picked up one of these Fractal Design R5 cases for uh, for better acoustics and dust filtration, and it's been fantastic. As for the reason why I've used it that long, it's not that I don't like having fast hardware, it's more that so far it's been just fine for what I use my computer for. And in terms of games, that is the latest Battlefield, and a bit of Beam and G-Drive, a bit of GTA, video editing of course, browsing and office work. And as long as it's fast enough for that, why should I upgrade it? I do think there are some underlying reasons in terms of the progression of computer hardware which has kept this computer from being fast enough. And that is first in terms of gaming, that the previous console generation just wasn't that impressive hardware wise. We had with the PS4 and the Xbox One, those had some pretty underwhelming AMD APUs with weak Jaguar uh, CPU cores and a GPU that was sort of on the level of AMD HD 7790, around that level of performance. And I do think that is why we haven't really seen a great uplift in minimum specifications in games for a long time, as developers always wanted their games to be on a as wide a range of hardware as possible. And also, in terms of CPU progress overall, for a long time there wasn't a lot of interesting things happening. Uh, this was Sandy Bridge and after that we had Ivy Bridge, we had Haswell, we had uh, Broadwell, uh, Sky Lake, and then KB Lake. And those all max out on four cores on the regular consumer platforms. And Sandy Bridge overall was just a very solid platform. Uh, it had great single threaded performance and also a lot of overclocking headroom. The 2600K had a turbo of 3.8 gigahertz, but my model has lift all its life at 4.3 gigahertz, so half gigahertz above stock frequency, but using stock voltage. And also it was the first mainstream Intel platform to have a SATA 600 to make use of the new SSD technology. Also had AVX already, so that was also great. But I would also like to say that overall for the, the choice of components also matters here. And that I purposely bought some quality components like the 800 watt power supply, like a nice motherboard, 
Not that I really wanted to take it full advantage of it, but that I knew that if I spent a little extra, that component could live an easier life. My system never drew 800 watts, but that means the PSU never had a hard time, and the same goes for the motherboard. I never pushed uh, crazy high daily uh, overclock voltages through it, so they have had to live a relatively easy life. And also, a bit of forward thinking, I bought a 2.5GB GTX 570 knowing that games in the future might need more VRAM than the stock 1.28GHz the 570 had. I also bought the i7 knowing that perhaps games would be more multi-threaded in the future, and that has come true to a certain extent. That isn't to say that everything has gone right. Um, of all things, the motherboard's onboard audio failed around 3 to 4 years in, so I've had to use an uh, external uh, audio card or sound card. And in 2018, one of the 570s had a VRAM failure, but that wasn't really an issue at that point, as pretty soon after I upgraded to the 1060. And looking back at these components and also at the prices I paid for them, also came, became clear that, wow, components were really cheap back in the day. For the CPU, the 2600K, that was Intel's top mainstream uh, platform CPU, just 275 euros and 98 cents. The motherboard, the P8Z68V, a premium ASUS model with the top chipset, 139 euros and 98 cents. And the GPU, this was the 570, the Nvidia's second best single GPU, 343 euros and 98 cents. So yeah, we just didn't know how good we had it back in those days. You could buy an entire high-end PC what you can now buy for the price of only a single GPU. So, yeah, it's a bit depressing in that sense. And also to look back, this platform has carried me through a lot of things. I've played over a thousand hours of Battlefield 3 on it, over 1100 hours of Beam and G Drive and GTA 4 combined. Just about every video you've seen on this channel was rendered on this machine. And for the past 10 years, I've pretty much used it daily. So, yeah, grown a bit emotionally attached to it, but unfortunately it has come time to uh, finally upgrade it. Battlefield 5 was already borderline in terms of performance, around 50 to 70 FPS on average. Now with Battlefield 2042 it's really struggling, especially on the 128 player maps it drops down to the mid 30s and for an FPS that is just unplayable. And also with video editing, um, with DaVinci Resolve, it struggles a bit when you add a lot of effects and you do a lot of timeline scrubbing so I really like that to be smooth as well but in the next video I'll cover what kind of components I'm going to replace this with but for now I'd like to end on a small montage to commemorate 10 years with these parts. You've been watching a fully buffered video and thank you for watching. <laughs>